Fun fact, super trawlers, which are the largest class of fishing vessels, can process and freeze up to 250 tons of fish per day. That's equivalent to about 500,000 pounds of fish. These massive ships can stay at sea for weeks at a time, storing thousands of tons of fish in their holds. Did you know that fishing nets are one of the oldest fishing tools used by humans? Archaeologists have found evidence of fishing nets that date back about 8,000 years. The oldest known fishing net was discovered in Finland at a site called Antreya, and it's believed to be from around 8300 BC. They were typically made from natural materials available to early humans, like flax, hemp, or wool. These fibers were twisted and knotted to form the mesh. They relied on their knowledge of knotting and weaving to create nets strong enough to catch fish. It was a skill passed down through generations. The design of these nets wasn't too different from what we see today, though the materials have evolved. Synthetic fibers were introduced in the early 20th century, but it wasn't until after World War II that materials like nylon became common in net making. Nylon was a game changer because it's stronger, more durable, and resistant to rot compared to natural fibers. Overall, it allowed for larger, more durable nets that could withstand the harsh conditions of the sea. Plus, the introduction of synthetic materials made nets more affordable and accessible to fishermen around the world. PET pellets are used to make the synthetic fiber, which is a key component in the production of the rope that is used to make our fishing nets. The pellets are poured into this hopper, they drop down into a heater that dries them out completely and extrudes them by forcing them into a spinner. At the end, each spinner is capable of pushing out up to 1,500 individual filaments, which are then cooled and combined into a single rope called a tow, made up of 24,000 individual synthetic fibers. About a hundred of these toes are then lubricated in preparation for a heating and stretching process that makes them ten times longer. Where they then gather onto these spools. First combined, then twisted together with precision. The filaments become strong yarns, the backbone of our nets. Once the yarn is made, it's stretched out and knotted together to create the familiar shapes we know today. These nets are then left on frames to be further stretched by us and through heat treatment. This ensures uniform mesh sizes ready to embrace the ocean's bounty. Through rigorous testing, each net is certified for the sea, ensuring safety and sustainability for the world's waters. <laughs>